In this tutorial, you'll see how to download the software for and then install and configure Ubuntu Linux Desktop in VMware Workstation. I'm following along with the simple step-by-step -step instructions in my How to Build a NetApp Lab for Free ebook, which you can download for free from www.flatbox.com. The networks I'm going to connect to here and the IP addresses that I configure are for that NetApp lab, but it's really easy to adapt the instructions to suit whichever project you're working on. As usual, I'm working from the how to build a NetApp ONTAP lab. Let's look at the lab topology diagram in the PDF to see where the Linux clients fit in. So I've got two clients. I've got Linux A, which is in department A. Its IP address is 172.23.4.2, and it's in the VMNet 4 network. And I've got Linux B with IP address 172.23.5.2 in the VMNet 5 network. The section you want to go to in the PDF to follow along with the step-by-step -step instructions is down near the bottom now, it's the Linux build section. And you can see I've got a link at the top here for the download page to download the Linux software. We're going to be using Ubuntu Linux for our lab. So I click on the link and then we want to go to the Ubuntu desktop. I'll click on that. And then the latest version right now is 18.04.1 LTS. So I will click on the download link there. And then the download should start automatically. Okay, so I've already downloaded it to save time. If I go to Windows Explorer and look in my downloads folder, you can see that's a file there. So it's an ISO file. Okay, so let's build the Linux A client now. So I'll go down to my NetApp Lab folder and I'll create a new folder in here and I will call that Linux A. And I'll go back to my downloads folder and I'll move the ISO file into that Linux A folder. Okay, then I will start up VMware Workstation Player, give it a second or two to start up. And then when it does, I'm going to create my Linux machine in VMware. Okay, so I want to click on create a new virtual machine and then choose to install from the middle option, the installer disk image file ISO, and then I'll browse to my Linux A folder and then double click on the ISO file there. It will automatically detect that it is installing Ubuntu. Click on next and then the full name I'm going to use here is Flackbox. I will use that for the username as well and a password of Flackbox1 with a capital F and then confirm the password and click on next. For my virtual machine name, I'm going to call it Linux A and I'm going to save it in the Linux A folder that I just created inside the NetApp Lab folder. Click on OK and next. Then I'll store the virtual disk as a single file just to keep it a bit more neat and tidy. Click on next. And then I'm going to click on customize hardware. So the first network adapter is going to be connected to VMNet 4, as you saw in the lab topology diagram. I also need to add a second network adapter to give me internet connectivity so that I can do software updates. So I click on add and then network adapter and finish. And this second network adapter is going to be bridged. I will replicate the physical network connection state and click on configure adapters. And I'm going to choose the adapter which is connected to the internet on my laptop here and click on OK. That is all my settings OK. And I'll just double check that my network settings are good. 
and then click on close and then click on finish. And I do want to power on the virtual machine right now. So I click on finish here and what it's going to do is it's going to start running the Ubuntu installer. This is going to take quite a while. I'll just remind me later for any software updates. So this is going to take maybe 10 minutes or so to actually install Ubuntu. So I'll pause the video now and we'll start again when Ubuntu has completed the installation. Okay, Linux has finished installing, so I will maximize this window and then click in here. I just need to swipe up to get the login screen and then click in my username and enter my password was flatbox1. Okay, and then I need to wait a few seconds for the desktop to appear. When it does, I don't need to see what's new in Ubuntu, so I'll click on that and quit out of there. Next, I'm going to wait for the software updater to start up automatically. That'll just take a few seconds as well. And when it does, I click on settings and uncheck each of these because I don't want to do automatic updates. It's going to ask me for my password again, so I'll enter that, and then uncheck each of the updates and set it to automatically check for updates, never. And then I can close out of here and close again. Okay, and then the next thing that I want to do is to download and install the storage software packages. So I will click on show applications in the bottom left hand corner and then go to the second page here and double click to open up a terminal window. Then in here, I want to elevate my privileges. So the command for that is to do su space dash enter my password again and then the command to get the packages i have to do the update first so i say apt dash get update and then this will take a few seconds to run through and then when that is done the command is apt dash get install port map nfs dash common and then a space and shifts dash utils and then open dash i scuzzy then smb client then open ssh dash server so that's the different packages that we want for storage for our our SAN and NAS client packages to connect to the storage system later when we are working with the labs. Click yes to continue. And then this will take around 30 seconds or so to download and install everything. And then when that is done, I go down to show applications again, and I'm going to double click on settings and what I can do is I can disable the second network card that was connected to the internet now. So in settings, I'm going to go to network and you'll see that only one of them is connected right now. This is my second network card that is connected to the internet. The first one failed because it was trying to connect with DHCP and there's no DHCP server. Well, I've already done the software updates that were required, so I can disable my internet connection now. If you ever do need to connect to the internet again later to download any software, just switch the network cards around. So right now I'm going to disable the second card and I'm going to enable the first card and connect it to the lab. So on that second ethernet card, I will click on the settings button and uncheck the checkbox to connect automatically so it won't try to connect next time I reboot and click on apply and then turn that second network adapter off. 
the next thing I need to do is to set the IP address on the first adapter that's connected to the lab. So I click on the settings button there and then go to the IPv4 tab. The method is going to be manual and the address here is 172.23.4.2 and then I tab across the subnet mask is 255.255.255.0 and the gateway is the virus router at 172.23.4.254. Then I'll click in the DNS field and in here I enter 172.23.4.1 That is my Windows server which is acting as the DNS server. I can then click in apply here and then make sure that that first network adapter is turned on. So that's me connected to the lab now. Now another thing that I want to do is set the DNS search domain to flatboxa.lab. In previous versions of Ubuntu, you could do it right here in the GUI, but that's been removed now. So we need to go back to the terminal window again. Now let me just look at my PDF to check the commands to enter here. Okay, the command to use is nmcli c modify then in quotes wired connection one close the quotes and then ipv4 dot dns slash search and then in quotes again flack box a dot lab my dns domain and then close the quotes and this is a case sensitive command, so be careful you don't put a typo in here. Okay, that is done. The next thing I need to do is flap the interface down and then back up again for this to take effect. So the command is nmcli c down and then in quotes wired connection one and then ampersand ampersand nmcli C up and wired connection one. Hit enter. This will bring the interface down, bring the interface back up again. And that is our network interface connected to the lab all set up now. Okay, let me see what we have got next. I can close the terminal window now and the settings window. And then that's okay, that's actually it. That was all that we had to do. So we've got Ubuntu installed. We have installed the software packages that are going to be required for this to be used as a SAN and NAS client. And we've configured our network settings. The last thing to do after I suspend this virtual machine is to build Linux B. So let me suspend this one so i go power and then suspend the guest and then click on yes and then i'll drag the pdf over again so you see for the second linux box set up exactly the same way the only differences are it's going to be named linux b rather than linux a it's in the vmnet 5 rather than the vmnet 4 network its IP address is 172.23.5.2 and the DNS server is the Windows server at 172.23.5.1. All detailed in the PDF. Thanks for watching. If you want to get hands-on practice with NetApp storage, you can download my free How to Build a NetApp Lab for Free ebook. It's got full step-by-step -step instructions on how to build a complete NetApp Lab and best of all, you can run it all for free on your laptop. And if you want to get my complete NetApp course, which covers everything you need to know about NetApp storage, you can check out the other video that you can see here too. Thanks.